Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to a complete Chevreuse guide. Chevreuse, or Chevreuse, as I naturally call her, so sorry in advance that I speak French, is the newest four star pyro polearm character in Genshin Impact, and she has a very unique support that we will cover in this video. In fact, in today's video, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about this character, covering her best builds, both artifact and weapon wise, best teams, play styles, constellations, and so much more, as well as showcasing her potential even at C0. Before we begin, I want you guys to know that I got this extensive guide out relatively early, thanks to her in game trial, and also because I had access to a media server to play her a bit before she came out. And lastly, as always, if you want to catch me live, I stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested. Excuse the slightly different audio from usual as I'm not home right now, and with all that out of the way, let's get into the guide. Alright, so starting things off, what does Chevreuse actually do? First of all, her elemental skill is going to be the main part of her kit. This is an ability that you can press or hold, firing a shot of AoE pyro damage when you tap it, and then continuously healing your active character afterwards. How much you heal is going to scale on your max HP, and it's a pretty decent amount amount of single target healing to your active party member. Before we talk about the healing though, I want to emphasize the hold part of this ability, where if you hold your skill, you will enter the aiming mode, where you can lock onto a target, fire a shot, and this shot will be significantly more powerful if you've proc the overload reaction. In fact, whenever you proc an overload on any character in your team, you will gain an overcharge ball, and then when you hold your skill, you can fire it, which will deal more power damage in a larger area. On top of that, you will still get your healing proc even if you hold your skill, and you share the same cold down in both forms, so there's really no reason not to hold your skill for the most part. If that wasn't enough, overloading doesn't just give you more damage. It won't just make your skill a bit better, but it's actually the core part of Chevreuse's kit, being a character whose buffs are centered around the overload reaction, or at least between electro and pyro units together. Her first passive talent is one that will give you a huge damage buff to both your pyro and electro characters. In fact, as soon as you proc an overload reaction, enemies affected by this overload will have both their pyro and and electro resistance decreased by 40% for 6 seconds. This is absolutely huge as resistance shred is very valuable to increasing your team's overall damage and is one of the main reasons why Animo supports are so prevalent in the meta and such strong options. The Viridescent Venor set that Animo characters can run decreases the resistance of whatever you swirl by 40%, which is the exact same as Chevreuse's passive. The 40% resistance decrease that is offered on Chevreuse's passive makes her a great support for teams where you'll be proccing the overload reactions comprised of only pyro and electro characters. This passive talent does come with that restriction, where it'll only proc if all of your party members are pyro and electro, and you also have at least one of each. Because of this, while your chevreuse will restrict what teams you can build, if you actually want to get her buffs, especially this 40% decrease in both pyro and electro res, she will differentiate herself from someone like Nilu, who also forces you to go only characters of two specific elements, hydro and dendro in her case, by effectively increasing the damage of your pyro and electro damage dealing characters characters and abilities, and not of the overload reaction itself. Nilu will buff your bloom damage and make you want to run elemental mastery characters in your team, at least the character that's triggering the reaction, but with Chevreurs, it's the opposite. She's increasing your damage through whatever pyro and electro abilities you're using, but not incentivizing you to focus on overload, as the reaction damage itself really isn't that high. This means that if you're running, for example, an electro character that will be triggering the overload reaction, you don't want to build elemental mastery on them just for that reaction, and going for your standard damage build will still be the way to go, as once again, Chevreuse will increase your damage by decreasing the resistance of opponents. If that wasn't enough, her second passive is one that'll just give you up to 40% attack as you fire an overcharged ball through your elemental skill. While your first passive's res decrease will last for only 6 seconds, which typically isn't the biggest deal as long as you have a decent amount of electro application through an on-field or off-field character, this second passive will last for 30 seconds, meaning that it'll basically always be active, provided you are firing an overcharged ball. Because of this, make sure you're proccing overload and using the hold skill on your chevreuse basically all the time for not only more damage but also more buffs as you would lose out on this attack percent if you were to just press your skill. Now for how much attack percent you gain this actually scales on your chevreuse's max HP 1% attack to all of your party members that are pyro or electro for every thousand max HP you have. The maximum is 40% attack at 40,000 HP which might seem like a lot but really isn't that hard to get if you're building your chevreuse in a supportive manner as we will cover in this video. Also if you did notice all of these buffs that you're gaining come from just the need to overload and use your elemental skill. The attack percent comes from holding your skill after overloading and then the res shred which is genuinely a much bigger DPS increase, a really really huge buff, is one that will require you to overload but also have only pyro and electro characters in your team whereas the rest of your kit doesn't really need that. Another thing you may have noticed with Chevreuse's kit is that your elemental burst is one that will deal two instances of damage. First of all doing a big hit of AoE pyro damage by shooting with your musket and then 
splitting into a bunch of secondary explosive shells, with these shells dealing a lesser amount of power damage. This burst has a 15 second cooldown and a 60 energy cost. While this burst does have a decent scaling based on your chivalry's attack, depending on your playstyle, this is more or less relevant, and sometimes it's not even worth using if you're purely using her in a supportive role, but more on this in the coming section. Because of this, focusing on your skill and your passive talents make her a really powerful, even low investment support that doesn't really need much to really be able to buff your team on top of giving you healing. In fact, for a bit more info on your healing, here's how much my 40k HP Chevreuse is healing me on a pretty standard build for my active party member. The healing is honestly pretty similar to someone like Kuki, and it's pretty decent, it's okay, it's not the most healing, but it's enough to allow you to not need to run another healer on top of giving you all the other buffs that we talked about. For more info about your skill, you should know that it heals once every 2 seconds, with the healing duration lasting for 12 seconds, with a 15 second cooldown. You also have one hit of Usia aligned damage on your skill, which can be convenient. Lastly, for your talent priority, a standard Chevreur's build would level her skill first, as this increases your healing as well as your damage. For your personal damage, leveling your burst can actually be a bit more efficient, but typically the healing on your skill is a nice upgrade as well if you're going for a more supportive playstyle. Do keep in mind that a low investment Chevreur's might not even need to level her talents almost at all, as a lot of her value comes from her passives, but the healing on your skill is quite nice. And obviously, you don't need to level your normal attacks. Now, with that in mind, for Chevreuse's playstyle, here there's actually a few important things you need to understand. First of all, the vast majority of Chevreuse's buffs can be attained very easily. All you need to do is have a full party with pyro and electro characters only, no other elements, proc an overload reaction, firing off your special overcharge ball by holding and firing your skill, and that's it. You will then not only heal your team, but also decrease the pyro and electro resistance of opponents by 40%, provided you just proc overload on them, and then on top of that, you will give your team up to 40% attack if you have 40,000 HP, or a bit less attack if your HP is not that high. Another really strong thing to note about Chevreuse's passive is how easily you get the pyro and electro resistance decrease just by proccing overloads even when your Chevreuse is off field, meaning you just constantly get it with very little effort, provided you have enough pyro and electro application. This is also something that is extremely easy to set up and can be nice against enemies where it would be very difficult to swirl a specific element, like against the Hydro Tulpa or the Thunder Manifestation that are in the current abyss and where you can't keep, for example, a pyro aura on them to swirl it. While there are ways to go around this, like swirling your guoba with sucrose or other advanced strategies, this convenience of easily and always decreasing the pyro and electro resistance of enemies as long as you trigger the overload reaction is definitely a big strength and convenience of this character. Because of this, building her and even using her at very low investment is super easy as you get a ton of value from just reducing the resistance of enemies, skyrocketing your pyro and electro character's damage. With that in mind, there are two potential ways to build Chevreuse. There is the standard healer full HP build, where you get at least 40,000 HP, you stack the 40% attack buff to all your party members, while also being able to heal a decent amount, as we saw earlier, to your on-field character. This is very easy to build, you don't even really need to use your burst, barely need to level your talents outside of maybe your skill for more healing, and can provide your team with the maximum amount of buffs with very little effort. This is the standard Chevreuse build, and one that we will cover in this video. Now with that in mind, there's another playstyle that revolves around building your Chevreuse more for damage. This is because her scalings are genuinely decently high, especially her overcharge ball and her burst, if you can give her buffs and build her correctly. With that in mind, since her damage scales on attack, whereas the attack buff that she gives scales on HP, you will be losing out on your team-wide attack buff in order to maximize her personal damage. You will go from giving your team 40% attack to maybe 20% attack if you're 20k HP instead of 40, but you will deal way more personal damage. Generally, it is still more advisable meta-wise to build her in a supportive role, given the calcs that I've done and seen. With that in mind, there are many factors that can affect this, and while I typically would just leave it at, hey, there's two viable playstyles you can go, with the healer one being more recommended, I unfortunately feel the need to go into more detail, so here is me rambling about it if you want more information. Regarding building Chevreuse for more damage, while it is viable, it is typically only recommended under the following situations. First of all, you need to have Bennett in your team, who already gives a huge amount of attack percent to your on-field character inside of his broken burst. It also gives a bunch of healing, which means that Chevreuse having less healing isn't a big deal, and because he gives so much attack through his burst, the Noblesse set and the Pyro Resonance, then not only will your Chevreuse deal a lot more damage, but also her attack buff going from 40% to 20% is less of a big change since you're getting so much attack percent anyways. With that in mind, even in those teams, maximizing Chevreuse's healing can still be better than damage if, one, you need Bennett's uptime and can't spend the extra time on Chevreuse inside of Bennett's field, if the other characters in your team, your Hyper Carry, or other strong sub DPSs, need field time and need to make the most out of every second of Bennett's burst. Another situation is if your Chevreuse is running the Song of Days Pass set, which we'll talk about in 
in an upcoming section where maximizing your Shiver Rose's healing will translate to more damage in your team when you factor in both the damage given from the set and the attack percent that you gain from your Ascension 4 passive for all of your party members. This is especially true if you're running multiple characters that deal a lot of damage, like a carry such as Raiden or Yoimiya, alongside a powerful support like Shang Ling, Fischl, or Beto, who also deal a lot of damage themselves. Because of this, there is a lot of nuance here, and most of the time, going a healer build is better and easier to do, but sometimes going for personal damage, especially if you're not farming the new healer set, which may not be efficient for every player, depending on what characters you have, can actually make your damage build very viable and sometimes actually optimal. Again, this depends on your investment level and your builds, but it's something that I at least wanted to highlight, especially if you care about making your Shavgurus herself shine. So I hope I did a good job at explaining that. We'll be covering both builds in this video, the standard HP one, which is what I typically recommend, and a damage one, which can sometimes be very strong as well, even though it's harder to build, requires more investment, and a bit more niche. With that in mind, Shavgurus is also a character that can give you many more buffs with her constellations, or especially just her constellation six, which is the main one that's focused on buffing your team. This constellation will not only give you more healing 12 seconds after your skill, giving all of your party members 10% of Shavgurus's max HP as healing, which is honestly a nice amount of bonus AoE healing. What the main part of this C6 is though, is the second part that will give you up to 60% pyro and electro damage bonus, stacking up 20% per stack every time a party member is healed with a maximum of three stacks. This means that as you're on field on a character, you will gain 20%, 40%, and then 60% pyro and electro damage bonus as they get healed. This is great for your on field carries like Yoimiya, Raiden, or literally anyone. And this is a buff that will only apply to the party member that's getting healed, meaning that for the most part, you'll typically be primarily buffing one character with this C6. With that in mind, this is a buff that you could also give to a character that would snapshot their ability if you manage to heal them either with the first part of this constellation or just by swapping into them, giving them at least 20% pyro and electro damage bonus before then swapping to your on field carry and getting the full 60% as they get healed. While this constellation does take some time to ramp up, an additional up to 60% pyro and electro damage bonus is a lot and makes her even more valuable. For the most part though, I think at C0 she's a perfectly strong and complete support. I just want to mention the C6 as a nice upgrade if you plan on getting it that does make her even more valuable, but isn't needed. She's not an incomplete four star at C0 like another character that was released in the past. With that in mind, I think now is the perfect part of the video to actually talk about constellations. Since we already covered C6, we might as well finish this before moving on to talking about our builds. In fact, other than her C6 giving you a team wide buff, the rest tends to be focused on Chevreuse and her personal damage. Her first constellation will give more energy, gaining six energy up to once every 10 seconds as your active character other than Chevreuse triggers the overload reaction. Your second constellation will give your elemental skill more explosions, two chain explosions after you hit a target with your hold skill that will deal additional instances of pyro damage. Your C3 and 5 will increase your talent levels, again more damage, and then your C4 will give you more casts of your hold skill for free after using your burst. In fact, with your C4 you can now use your burst and then hold your skill three times in a row before it goes on cooldown. You get two free casts of your hold skill before it does go on cooldown the third time. Do note that you won't get extra particles from using your skill extra times unless you were to wait long enough, use one skill, swap out, and then come back in around 10 seconds later, and then use your skill again, but that's usually not what most people will be doing. It's typically just going to allow you to press and hold your skill three times after using your burst, which is good for her personal damage. Overall, as you can see, these constellations are primarily for her personal damage, except her C6, which is amazing for buffs, and the main one that is really relevant, and a big upgrade, despite her being great and perfectly usable and complete at C0. Alright, now with that out of the way, let's now talk about how to build your Chevreuse for each type of playstyle that you're looking for. Throughout the coming sections, we'll talk about a purely supportive HP stacking healer build, and then we'll also talk about a sub DPS that focuses on her personal damage as well. First of all, for the artifact sets you're looking for, as a support slash healer, it's pretty straightforward. First of all, a very resin, efficient, and easy way to build your Chevreuse is going to be mix and matching 2P sets that give you valuable stats. This can include HP% percent 2 pieces like Tenacity the Millet and Vorukasha's Glow, either together or mix and match with a healing bonus 2 piece like Song of Days Past, Ocean Hued Clam, or Maiden's Beloved. Any of these mix and match together can be a great way to either get more HP or get more healing or a little bit of each. 2 piece Emblem is also viable for energy recharge if you plan on using your burst every rotation, although it's not as necessary in a purely supportive build. Outside of mix and matching 2 piece sets though, there are some really good supportive sets that you can run on Chevreuse to maximize your team's damage. The first of which includes the 4 piece Noblesse Oblige, a standard one that will give all your party members 20% attack after using your burst. While Chevreuse can make good use of the set, you will need to build energy recharge on her if you want to be able to burst every rotation, but 
but if you can do that, the attack percent is great, provided you're not already running Noblesse on another character in your team, for example, someone like Bennett that you may be running alongside of her. Other good at supportive sets include, first of all, Tenacity the Millith, and while the two piece will give you HP percent, which is great, the four piece will give your party members 20% attack for three seconds after using your skill. While this is typically not recommended on characters whose skills don't constantly deal damage even when they're off field, you can actually manage to extend the duration of this buff in certain teams where you're running characters who can snapshot it alongside your chevreurs. While this set is niche, it can be a strong option when paired with those snapshotting characters like Shang Ling, Fischl, or Beto, who you can swap into right after using your skill on chevreurs to use their abilities and snapshot this attack buff, making it last for its entire duration. Additionally, I also wanted to talk about the Song of Days Pass set, or technically Ocean Hued Clam, two sets that will give you more damage based on how much you're healing. Song of Days Pass in particular is interesting, as the two-piece set will give you healing bonus, and then the four-piece will give you a damage buff similar to Shenha's Quills to your active party member whenever they damage opponents with their attacks, skill, or burst. How much damage you're doing will scale on how much you heal, but generally, if you go on a full healer build where you're maximizing your HP and don't have to build too much of any other stat, you can actually cap out this set, even at C0, making it a strong supportive option, and sometimes even your best in slot. This set will also get better with C6, and is especially valuable if you can really make use of it, have enough healing, and don't accidentally waste the buffs by doing very like small hits of damage. With that in mind, this set will get better at C6 though, as you do get quite a bit more burst healing, which would make the set even more valuable. Also, this domain isn't really the most efficient to spend your resin on, but it is definitely a good and viable set that can sometimes be your best in slot, so I did want to mention it and highlight it in this set. Section. With that in mind, you can also run other healing sets like Ocean Yude Clam or Maidens, whereas for most people, I envision you getting the most value out of just mix and matching 2P sets for a low investment build or going a supportive set that'll buff your team like Noblesse Oblige, or in more unique cases, Song of Days Pass, which is what I am running, or Tenacity of the Middleith. With that in mind, for a damage dealer build, a sub DPS Trevors, the sets you're looking for are completely different. First of all, Emblem of Severed Fate is great at increasing your burst damage, and provided you need a bit of ER, which Trevors usually needs quite a lot of, then this will be your best in slot set a lot of the time. This set gives you a lot of burst damage and energy recharge that is then converted into burst damage, really skyrocketing how much damage you'll get by using your burst. Other than Emblem though, a lot of great offensive sets exist, such as 4-piece Golden Troop for skill damage, 4-piece Lava Walker if enemies are pyro afflicted to gain just a 35% damage bonus to your entire kit, or technically Thunder Soother if there's a lot of Electro on enemies, although this is less relevant, as you're probably going to use Chevreurs near the start of your rotation where enemies aren't Electro afflicted, but Lava Walker can work, 4-piece Crimson Witch of Flames, or mix and matching 2 piece sets of any of the offensive ones that I'll put on screen, being either Pyro Damage, Attack Percent, Energy Recharge, or Skill Damage. Be sure to choose what's right for you, based on your substats, to really get the most value out of every ability. Moving on for the stats you want on Chevreurs, it's very straightforward. As a healer or support, you genuinely don't need much. All you want is at least 40,000 HP to give the maximum amount of attack to your entire party, and then more HP and healing bonus to maximize your healing. In a build like this, you don't even need to use your burst, you can, and we'll cover how much ER you need for that a bit later, but using your burst can be relevant for supportive artifact sets like Noblesse Oblige that require you to use your burst to make use of its effect. But for the most part, all you're looking for is at least 40,000 HP and potentially some healing bonus. Because of this, for your main stats, you're looking for HP on your sands, HP on your goblet, and either HP or healing bonus on your circlet. If you don't need more healing, an HP circlet can be preferred over a healing bonus one, whereas typically to maximize your healing, healing bonus will obviously be better, especially because it's a stat that you can't get on your substance stats, whereas you can get more HP and get your minimum of 40,000 that you're looking for. With that in mind, if you tend to run the Favonius Lance, which is a supportive weapon we'll talk about in the next section, then going for crit rate on your circlet and or on your substats is going to be nice to proc its effect more often. Do keep in mind that energy recharge is still viable in this build if you plan on using your burst, with the exact amount you need varying quite heavily. In fact, if you want to use your burst every rotation on Travelers, I will put on screen rough estimates of how much energy recharge you will look for. Keep in mind that this will vary extremely highly based on the team you're running, how many pyro characters, Favonia supports, and even Raiden Shogun, who gives you a lot of energy, can greatly affect how much ER you need. This is mostly relevant, being crucial for either a damage dealing build or a supportive one if you have a supportive set like Noblesse Oblige that requires you to use your burst, whereas without it, it's less relevant and you can be a perfect support without ER just using your skill. Moving on for the stats you want in a damage build, it's very straightforward. You typically go for attack percent or energy recharge on your sands, pyro damage bonus on your goblet, and crit rate or crit damage on your circlet, depending on which one you need more of. HP percent in this build is still a viable substat as you'll be increasing the attack percent of all of your party members, whereas to maximize your personal damage, then damage percent and crit and even attack are more relevant. Keep in mind that for your ER amounts, as I said, they vary heavily based on your team
team, but make sure you can use your burst every rotation if you're playing Chevreuse as a sub DPS, as it is a big part of your damage. Moving on for your Chevreuse's weapons, there are actually a lot of really good options, especially supportive ones that can help your entire team. First of all, for a supportive build, there are many to choose from. Black Tassel is a three star free to play weapon that gives you the most HP out of any polearm. Because of how much HP you get here, you can very easily hit the 40k HP you're looking for and maximize your healing by going for like healing bonus on your artifacts, as well as some energy recharge if you need, and make it just a really accessible free to play option that gives you a lot of HP. Other weapons that can potentially be better include the Rightful Reward, which is the new Fontaine craftable blacksmith weapon. This weapon you can craft and fully refine to R5 for free, and it will give you 27% HP, less than Black Tassel, but also a lot of energy on its effect. In fact, at R5, the wielder will gain 16 energy whenever they're healed, triggering up to once every 10 seconds. Now, while you may need to stay on field on Chevreuse to actually trigger this effect if you're the only healer on your team, getting 16 energy typically can make this worth it. And if you have her six constellation, then the bonus healing you get from that constellation will actually trigger this effect one more time and allow you to get even more energy. This weapon also has a high base attack, making it even viable for a sub DPS build, gives you HP to help stack your passive, your healing, and also gives you a lot of energy, especially if you have another healer on your team or can just make sure that your Chevreuse does get healed at least once before you swap out of her. Other supportive weapons that are great include the Favonius Lance, which is an amazing supportive option for pretty much any support character, giving you a lot of energy and a passive that will give energy to your entire team when you get a critical hit. This weapon gets better with refinements and is great at alleviating the ER needs of all of your characters while also giving energy to Chevreuse, which is useful in many teams. Another weapon that gives HP is Staff of Homa, but this is more of an offensive weapon that I'll talk about a bit more when talking about options for a sub DPS build, whereas as a support, Rightful Reward, Favonius Lance, and Black Tassel are the three options to go for based on what you need, either HP, energy, or a mix of energy and HP. Also, the Katane Cross Spear with refinements can give you a lot of energy after using your skill, making it viable, but not as recommended as other pole arms because you don't really gain any other stats than just a bit of energy, whereas Rightful Reward gives you HP and Fav gives energy to your whole team. Do keep in mind though that with constellations, especially like C4, where you can use your skill multiple times, Rightful Reward becomes even more relevant as you'll spend more field time on your Chevreuse, meaning that she will get healed from her own skill very easily. Generally though, it's a weapon that I really do like as a supportive option that just gives you a lot of stats in most teams, provided you can make use of its effect. And if you can't, then a ton of other options that I mentioned are very strong as well. Now for a sub DPS damage focused build, a lot of pull arms that we mentioned earlier are still viable, but there's other ones that you can use as well. First of all, what I mean by this is weapons like Favonius Lance and Rightful Reward, because they give you a lot of energy and have relatively high base attacks and also Fav gives energy to your entire team, whereas Rightful Reward gives HP, which is more attack to your entire team. These weapons are still viable even in a sub DPS context where your overall team's damage will still be pretty high with these weapons, making them good four stars for any build. For more DPS centered weapons though, you can use basically any offensive five star pole arm that give you a lot of good stats with something like Staff of Homa being particularly interesting as it gives you a ton of crit damage, attack, and also HP to help with your passive. Pretty much any offensive four star is viable as well, like Deathmatch, The Catch, or even Prospector's Drill. Deathmatch is a staple go-to for anyone who buys the battle pass, but even the supportive four stars that I talked about earlier are really great, and then all of the five star stat sticks are amazing with Homa being particularly interesting for the HP and crit damage that it gives you. All right, now with all that out of the way, let's get into one of the most important sections, talking about Chevreuse's best teams and synergies. First of all, it's important to highlight that most of Chevreuse's teams are going to be ran with only Pyro and Electro characters to make full use of her passives, procking the overload reaction and getting all of her buffs. The one thing you need to keep in mind as a disclaimer is that overload's main downside as a reaction is that it'll knock enemies away very rapidly and very annoyingly, and you can't group them up with an Nemo character, as Chevreuse's first passive will require you to run only Pyro and Electro characters if you want it to work. With that in mind, bosses won't get displaced, and so overload's a lot more efficient against them, but just in general, Chevreuse does make up for this weakness by giving you a lot of buffs. With that in mind, here are the teams you should run with this character. First of all, she has incredibly high synergy with a few characters that I want to talk about. First of all, Bennett. Now, while Bennett performs a somewhat similar role to this character in the sense that they both heal and give you buffs, they actually complement each other very well. This is because Chevreuse will give you some attack, reduce the resistance of enemies, and heal you, whereas Bennett will also give you a significant amount of healing and, more importantly, a huge amount of attack. This will skyrocket your damage, as well as being a nice pyro battery to give you some energy, making them really good when used alongside of each other. Now, if you want to use Chevreuse as your solo healer and buffer, that's fine. If you don't want to use Bennett in your team, that is okay. But do understand that using them together is honestly a strong pairing that I recommend. After that, you want another 
sort of sub DPS or support character that can help you proc the overload reaction. This is going to be someone who can apply either electro or pyro from off field, synergizing with your entire team. For an electro support, a character like Fischl works exceptionally well as she has really high single target damage, great electro application, and will also have incredibly good damage because she's also buffed by your other characters like Bennett and Chevreuse will increase your electro damage overall. Other options for an electro support include characters like Beto, Yai Miko, or technically an off-field Raiden or Kuki, but that's more niche. On a similar note, if you're running an electro on field carry, you can actually run Shang Ling as a really strong pyro off-fielder who will also snapshot all the buffs you're giving her through Chevreuse and Bennett and will deal really good pyro damage, allowing you to constantly proc overload with your on-field electro carry. Teams like this can actually work very well with someone like Raiden Shogun, who's a great on-field character with Chevreuse. In fact, Raiden hyper carry teams have always been a very prevalent team for Raiden, one of her strong ones where she can shine, give a bunch of energy to her whole team, and deal really good damage. When being paired with an electro character like Fischl, Yai, or especially Sara to buff her own damage, a buffer like Bennett, and then typically an Animo support like Kazua, but Chevreuse can actually perform similarly here. This is especially true at C6, but even without it, she can be a great replacement or alternative that can free up Kazua for your other team. On a similar note, you can also use Shang Ling in this team, have three pyro characters, Shang Ling, Bennett, Chevreuse, and then an on-field electro driver to give you energy and do a lot of damage. I also tested Sino in this team, and while it was genuinely fun and viable, as in I cleared the abyss with it, I wouldn't recommend it over Sino's other teams, where he's focused more on dendro reactions, such as Hyper Bloom and Aggravate. The same can be said with a lot of other electro characters that want to be ran in dendro teams, but with Sino, this team comp actually worked and was fun. Just note that it's not really as meta, and Raiden Shogun is the much more recommended option here. A Bennettless team I had a lot of fun using on stream that actually was quite strong was Yai Miko, Fischl, Shang Ling, and Chevreuse. Using her as your support and healer, alongside Shang Ling, Fischl, and Yai, all of which doing good damage, and Yai Miko being able to normal attack on field, as she is a catalyst who also wants some field time. You cycle through your characters, and this team did work very well, with some slots being replaceable, with Beto being a viable electro option here as well. Moving on for Pyro on fielders, someone like Yoimiya is a great choice. Chevreuse is a great addition to Yoimiya overload teams, where you can pair her with literally any electro support and do good damage from on field, especially to a single boss enemy. Yoimiya is therefore a great beneficiary of Chevreuse, who can make use of all of her buffs. In a team like this, you could also run more than one electro character, although replacing Bennett is not typically what I recommend. This team structure can also be applied to many, many different pyro carries, genuinely characters like Klee or Yenfei, who can just apply a ton of pyro from on field, can be good carries alongside Chevreuse and Bennett. Yoimiya and Klee in particular. You could technically do some things with Dea, although she really doesn't have a lot of field time, so you need someone else to swap into after her burst is up. Additionally, I've also found through my testing that Linny can work with the Chevreuse, but you need to make sure that you don't have too much Electro, as you want enemies to still be affected by Pyro to really make the most out of your talents and get the most damage bonus. With that in mind, Chevreuse, especially with C6, can give you a lot of damage and can be viable in a Linny team, provided you have enough Pyro. Your last slot could be someone like Dea for resistance interruption and off-field Pyro application, Shang Ling for even more of that, or Bennett for a lot more damage, but less Pyro application. While Linny's typically played in a mono Pyro team, I think having one Electro character here, as long as you have enough Pyro application, can actually work out and be a viable team, at least through my testing. As far as overload teams go, the sky is genuinely the limit with Chevreuse. I really believe that basically any Pyro or Electro on fielder can work with the correct team core. Chevreuse and Bennett, followed by strong Electro or Pyro support slash sub DPS, will get buffed by them and help you proc more reactions, apply more of their element, while also having an on field carry to shine. Now, while I don't want to oversell Chevreuse as a character because Overload isn't the best reaction, I think her buffs make her applicable in any Overload team you want to play for the most part. For the other Pyro or Electro characters I didn't mention, while they are viable in Overload as well, they're typically recommended in other teams. For example, Hu Tao, who performs well most of the time, I would highly recommend using her in a Vaporize team, which is why I didn't really mention her in this section. With that in mind, I do think Chevreuse will have synergy with future Electro and Pyro carries, like potentially Clorind, if they have any synergy with Overload, but obviously we don't know yet. Lastly, for a very niche thing that I wanted to mention, I do see Chevreuse at C6 technically being viable in teams with characters of different elements, as while you won't get access to your first and most important passive, you'll still have your C6 buffs and potentially your attack buff if you're overloading, as well as healing anywhere you can fit Chevreuse, which can make her viable as a second Pyro option if you're trying to swirl Pyro in a Hu Tao Vape team, for example, or others if this is something that you want to experiment and try out for yourself. And while this does have potential, it's very niche, dependent on C6, and not really the point of this video, as a character who is made for pure overload teams. Now for the showcase of this video, since Chevreuse is a support
support and the video is getting really long I tried to include footage from most of the teams that I talk about throughout the section and throughout the video so that you can see her in action I'll keep some more on screen as I'm talking in multiple different overload teams where she can shine in case you were wondering my shivers alternates between two builds a purely healer's song of days past one and a damage focused emblem one for a bit more fun when I have Bennett up time keep in mind that in the, all the footage you're seeing Chevrus is C0 and all of my five stars except Raiden Shogun are C0 my Raiden is C2 because I activated it like two years ago overall I am very pleased with this new character as a niche four star that's not for everyone but really good in the teams where she can shine replacing an Anemo character or allowing you to run them on another team reducing resistances giving you buffs and getting even better at C6 while still being very good in her niche in my opinion at C0 make her a great support that I really like I like playing her damage or healer and she's someone as I said that I have been getting a lot of enjoyment out of. Sorry if this video was too long, I tended to ramble a lot so I made this guide longer than I wanted, but I hope you enjoyed it and don't mind the delay. I'll be back to my regular recording setup soon as I'm on my way home. I hope you enjoyed this guide, I hope you found it helpful, and as always I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.